Hello everyone, today we're getting into the attributes and special abilities of each of the victims and this should give you a good idea of how you might want to play each character. Some of you guys may have seen the victim trading cards. This features a little bit of their backstory, their attributes, and their special ability. Let's take a look at what the attributes mean. So starting off, we have toughness. Now, toughness is going to be how much damage you can sustain before you're incapacitated and your recovery time. So how quickly you will recover from hits. I'm not sure if it's going to affect like how quickly you heal or what not. Not everything is explained, but it does have to do with sort of your shield, so to say. How much damage you can absorb before you get killed. Endurance is going to be your stamina, how quickly your stamina will drain for that character, and how quickly your stamina regenerates, and so that will feed into how much you can run, how quickly you can run, and everything that kind of deals with having a burst of speed will affect your stamina. Your strength will affect various things, like uh, I guess you get stunned after doing a sneak attack, so that'll affect the stun duration, grappling in close quarters and how you can or can't get out of it, bursting out of hiding spots, which is something we have yet to see, and strength assists in interactions like escaping restraints, opening crawl spaces, and turning off the generator. I'm assuming it, it, it kind of affects how quickly you can do these things. Because if you see here, it does take them quite some time to enter into a crawl space seems like some characters will do it quicker than others. And of course you're going to have a perk tree and a skill tree to kind of feed into these things, maybe make any of these attributes stronger, etc. Proficiency is how quickly you can do a task, for example lock picking, how quickly you can do it or how slow they will do it. Uh, any interaction where you're messing with something, I'm assuming like a fuse box, or a gate, or anything like that. How proficient are they at messing with equipment or doing interactions? Proficiency will affect that. Stealth. Stealth. Now, they're being very clear about how stealth attribute will not affect things like hiding in a bush or hiding in the shadows. That's just something everybody can do, but it will affect things like performing action silently, like messing with a door or a padlock or a generator or something you're messing with stuff it makes noise some characters will be louder about it some will be very quiet about it it just depends on the stealth attribute affecting that so as you can see the attributes are a little bit more involved than they were on friday the 13th which is a really cool thing makes for messing with your skill tree a little bit more interesting for each character depending on how you want to play them and then on top of that we go into their special abilities which their special abilities actually sort of complement their attributes and you'll see that as we start to get into the, the first one here so like Connie for example has the ability to allow her to pick a lock much faster at the cost of stamina and her family proximity warnings without consuming the unlock tool now this means if you have something to unlock something, she saves it, she doesn't lose it, it does not expire. But, family proximity warnings. If you guys want to know what that is, that is the little aura that you're seeing on the outside of the screen there. And the music that starts to fade in when uh, a family member starts to get close. I'm assuming that stuff will go away and the family member will have an easier time kind of just sneaking up on you suddenly. Connie's going to be crucial in those moments where you do need to get through a door rather quickly. Say Leatherface is pretty close behind you, but at least you have the time enough to get Connie up front. She can get that lock off the door. You guys can kind of make your way through the door in just enough time that Leatherface can't catch up and kill everybody. Connie in those particular moments could mean the difference between life and death. And then if you look here at Connie's attributes, she is very high proficiency and very high in stealth. So if you want to be getting those doors open for your team and really be making some of the least amount of noise possible, 
then Connie is definitely your go-to girl. She's the fixer-upper. She's going to get shit done. I'd have to say that she's probably most like Deborah Kim from Friday the 13th, so she's definitely going to be one of my favorites that I go into. Next up, we have Sonny. He's the intellectual one. He's going to be going into matches with a heightened sensibility, so he's going to be able to detect uh, when a family member is around He's going to be essentially your radar. Uh, so if the family can come into the game with the players intentionally playing stealthy and, and you can do things with the family, like stand in a room, like you know the victims are coming towards your room. So you get somewhere like in a dark corner or behind some object that you know, you know they're not going to they're not going to catch you around that object right off the bat. Sonny can sort of maybe lead the way in, you know, like just a scenario. You get to a certain room and Sonny's like, hey, someone's in there. You know, maybe he's using his heightened ability and he can hear uh, he can hear a family member breathing in another room, right? And so the player is like, don't go in there, somebody's in there. And then, you know, the victim that you're with is like, I don't hear anything. And then the Sonny player is like, Trust me, someone's in there. We need to go this way instead. And so you kind of follow Sonny. He's leading the way, keeping everybody protected by listening out for the family members. So that could lead to some really tense situations with Sonny leading the way. You know, maybe he doesn't want to be in front, but he knows he has to because he's essentially got to do his job, you know, keep everybody else safe or at least on the preemptive of hearing the other family members if you're kind of in a group together. Now, while Sonny can provide a preemptive for the other victims, he is not the toughest one of the group. He actually can be taken out pretty quickly with low toughness. He's high endurance, so he does have good stamina. He has good strength, so he can put his weight in during a tussle. And not so proficient and very low on stealth, so while he is the one that can provide awareness for the rest of the group, he's also the one that's going to be making a lot of noise. So there you go, Sonny. He's a little bit of an interesting balance, a very interesting character to go in and mess around with, I'd say. Definitely going to be one I go in and try to learn because I like the idea of hearing things before others and giving them that warning to see what happens afterwards, you know? It's an, it's an exciting thing. I like the... I like the idea of having suspenseful moments just thinking about the different kinds of encounters that could go down. So next we have Julie with the ability called Ultimate Escape. Think of her ability like Meg from DBD getting a sprint burst. So what happens is, is you get reduced stamina drain and you sprint for a short period of time. And on top of that, she can't be tracked down by the family. So she kind of essentially gets a get out of jail free in terms of running really fast for a short period of time, unable to be tracked. So Julie will be good at breaking line of sight. If a family member is on your tail and you can't really do anything about it, she's going to be able to break that line of sight and get away. And you're definitely going to have to think about when you use that. So map knowledge is definitely going to be key with Julie over time using her as bait so you're gonna have to start thinking about some strats with her try to use julie to get a family member off of another player and then at when they start chasing you down you can fire up her ultimate escape break line of sight and there you go you've just kind of saved another player's life right there in those moments and then i'm sure people will be creative with all these abilities and sort of come up with their own situational awareness of what's going on and be able to use it to save either their self or another teammate. Now stacking on top of that for Julie, she has some of the highest stealth for all of the victims. Uh, she's not as proficient. Her strength is very low, so you don't want to get her into a tussle with one of the family members. Her endurance and toughness are high, so she can take some hits and she will be able to run for a longer amount of time than others now i know what you guys are doing over there you're looking at julie and you're saying vanessa she is going to be the vanessa of texas chainsaw massacre but i assure you that they're probably not going to make that same mistake 
with Julie that they did with Vanessa because Vanessa was literally the road runner. It's just you know it was it was a time trying to get Vanessa, but I don't I don't think you're gonna be able to do the same shenanigans with her that you did in Friday the 13th. Maybe some people will get good enough they'll be able to pull off those shenanigans, but we'll see. Leland has the ability called Lifesaver, so Leland will be able to football shoulder ram a family member and knock them, stun them, to save either himself in a fatal encounter or a teammate. So if you want to compare this to something, you just, I guess you could compare it to Dead Hard from DVD. It's sort of the opposite, right? Instead of it being you earning iframes in order to dodge an attack and not get hit, you're using it on the actual killer or family member to stun them and get away in that sense. So it's like a, it's more of a realistic dead hard, a more grounded dead hard that makes sense for this type of game. So Leland is going to be good for saving his own or other teammates' lives in very critical situations. And then looking over to his attributes, you can see that uh, that Leland is actually not that tough. So he's going to be able to take a few hits seemingly, but it, it seems like if he does get into a tussle, he might eat it pretty quickly. So just be careful with him. It looks like you can use his special ability to shoulder charge a family member, but definitely be careful around them because he's not going to be able to eat too many hits, if at all. His endurance and strength are good, so if he does get into a tussle, what they call a close encounter, there might be other kinds of encounters. I'm just not sure. We don't know the whole meta of everything that's going on in the, in the game, but if you do get into one of those close encounters, it seems like he will be able to possibly uh, work his way out of that and survive a situation. Uh, his endurance is his is his stamina, so he has decent stamina. He has decent proficiency, too, but his stealth is really down there. So you just want to be careful with Leland. So he's going to be the, the guy that's kind of in the family's face more often than the others, I'd say, because his stealth is pretty down there. But at least he has his special ability to kind of buy him that get-out-of-jail-free card. So it'll be interesting playing Leland as well. Like all the all the victims seem very interesting so far to me. Definitely going to want to jump in uh to each of them. They are way more fleshed out than the Friday the 13th characters. That is for sure. So then we have Anna's pain is nothing ability. So what this is when you activate it is that it significantly reduces damage she'll take from attacks and falls, like jumping out of windows, and it says her additional buff is a temporary immunity to the effects of any poison as well. So if you wanted to compare it to something else, think of DBD's Borrowed Time, where you can sort of cover another victim or survivor and take a hit. That's what she's going to be doing. Her strat, when I look at this, is running in front of other players right when they're about to be attacked and taking the hit for them. While you're firing up her ability, she won't get hurt in that moment. It's like she's having a brave moment, jumping in front of another victim, taking the hit, and then getting away and getting out of there. Uh, or you can play bait. You know, get a family member to chase after you. Get them off of somebody else that's potentially about to be chased or is in a chase. And then you can jump out of a window and her ability will be fired up. She'll be able to land and not take too much damage. You know, getting away in that moment. And so that is a really cool strat with Anna. Basically using yourself as a shield for other teammates. And I'm sure there are other things that you could possibly come up with. So jumping in and looking at Anna, right? Her toughness is the highest. So again, feeding into her ability, she's going to be able to be that one that takes hits. She's very rough and tumble. She's kind of like that final girl, right? She She's getting abused, but she, she can take it, right? She's going to pull through to the end. She has very final girl qualities about her. Her endurance seems middle of the road. Her strength when she gets into a tussle with a family member is kind of on the middle lower side there. And she's not going to be efficient with equipment. And her stealth is middle of the road. 
she's resilient and she's tough and her passion to get her sister back makes her you know she's taken this abuse and she can take the hits and but her her passion and her drive just keeps her going do you guys have any ideas in your head about how you're going to use these characters in a match especially if you've been playing other games like friday or dbd you know how in your head do you think you're going to use these characters i want to see some of the guesses out there again we only know I'd say about 60 or 70% of the meta so far, we don't know everything of what's going on inside of matches. So it's kind of hard to know, but still fun to theorize. Now here's the thing that's going to make this game live a long life, right? There's a skill tree, right? So with all these attributes and the special skill sets that everybody has, the special ability, uh, with your skill tree... You're going to be able to mess around and directly affect their special ability or their attributes. So you'll be able to mess with certain gameplay elements, give and take on various things to personalize your character, your victim, and make them exactly the way you want to make them depending on how you like to play. Are you more stealthy? Do you like to be straightforward? Do you want to go after certain objectives? Do you want to help your teammates more? So you'll be able to... We don't know what's going to be on the skill tree, but just thinking about it in your head, this, along with the way the maps are going to work, is just going to make each round something different each time because you're also going up against the family's skill trees and their special abilities and their attributes which we don't even know about yet some of them so with all of that kind of combined into the game's meta which makes up you know how everybody's going to play their own way is really going to mix this all up for a very strong foundation of a game this is exciting you know people are going to come up with one build and then they you know maybe they get tired of that build and then they grow their skill tree and then they make another build and then they and so you have the experimentation there to kind of mess around with certain characters you know with that and as long as gun keeps coming out with more content and growing the way that the game's meta works and extending on it over time this game's not going on anywhere I mean, look at Friday the 13th. It barely has some of the things that they've built into this Texas game, and it's still being played. So the Texas game, in my mind, already has a really long life ahead of it. You guys, please like and subscribe. I am following Texas Chainsaw Massacre Hardcore, along with Killer Clowns from Outer Space. We're going to dabble with some Ghostbusters coming up here in a few days. Get down in the comments section. Let me know what you plan on doing with your build in Texas Chainsaw Massacre or how you think that you might want to play during some of the matches based off of what we know so far. We still have a lot of meta to learn about. I will see you guys next time in the next video. Bye-bye.